In today's discussion, we're going to be taking a much closer look at genomics in Africa. And today's guest is going to help me unpack some of the nuances and differences between how genomics is being used in the Northern Hemisphere compared to how it's being used for certain applications in Africa. When it comes to building infrastructure, we're going to unpack some of the requirements around building and capacitating the continent for NGS or next generation sequencing. In addition, we're going to ask the question of how far are we from really doing whole genome sequencing for humans on a regular basis? I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Hi, today I have on Charles Ruri, going to talking about genomics across the landscape of Africa. Charles, fantastic to have you on. Um, essentially, we're going to get into the landscape locally. But before we touch on that, uh, do you want to give us a bit of an overview in 60 seconds? What is genomics? But genomics is basically looking at the genetic composition of any organism, whether it's alive or it's dead. You know, and that we are referring to the DNA or the RNA component of it because we do have DNA, in like, let's say most of human, but you also have some viruses that have RNA. So genomics, you're all trying to understand what do you have, what makes it, what makes you unique from the other individual, and those are the areas we take advantage and come up with like breeding strategies or things to for treatment. So, but I'm sure we'll get into this more into details later on. But that's just the simplest way to say genomics, just about the genetic material of any organism, dead or alive. Okay, awesome, excellent. Now, I mean, there's been this massive adoption of NGS and uh, so next generation sequencing, parallel sequencing. There's been a lot of work happening in the Northern Hemisphere, especially Europe, the North American markets. Um, in terms of South Africa, what types of applications, and not just South Africa, but Africa in general? You know, what are we also, in, I imagine, whole genome sequencing for humans is maybe on the cards, but it's not as active. What, what, is, what are African sequencing at the moment? So I would say, like, uh, we know that left behind, but we're still playing catch-up game because, uh, for example, in South Africa, we introduced genomics around 10 years ago. And if, if I compare back then and what we have now, we have several institutes that's already holding some of these uh, next-generation sequencing platform, mainly Illumina, because that's the, 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 they're the leaders in the industry. But as I can say, like, because they also cover the rest of Africa as well, I can see the adoption there is much slower. And just to answer your question, most of the work we have seen previously was mainly on the pathogens, you know, things relating to diseases and all that. But now we're seeing a lot of interest coming in, even things to human health and even in agriculture. So we're getting there, but I must say Africa still underrepresented globally because most of the genomes that have been done have all been done in European countries, as, as you mentioned earlier. But we are here to make sure that, you know, more of African genome, you know, because I believe Africa is very beautiful and our genome should be out there because we so, we're so good in so many ways, but we're not as well sequenced. So, yeah, we have a lot to go to do here, but we're getting there slowly. Okay, awesome. And I assume when you meant, uh, you know, pathogens, they're looking for variants. So, like, I know we saw this with the, uh, uh, the COVID variants, looking at that, um, you know, for SARS-CoV-2. Uh, and I imagine it's the same for all these uh, different uh, pathogens that plague uh, society. So that seems to be the main focus. Now, on this point, I mean, surely when it comes to rolling out genomics, there needs to be some kind of centers of excellence, you know. Is it one where, you know, that's a core focus of what's the current rollout in Africa, or is genomics becoming so cost-effective that, you know, multiple universities can implement these processes? I would say it's actually both fronts, but as you are seeing, like, as the companies are growing, you know, like, just to give you an example, even before I go to the specific about the kind of work that we are really doing, it took more than 10 years and costed billion of dollars to do the human genome project, you know? Right now, that can be done, like, in about 48 hours, and you can be able to sequence 48 human genomes, you know? So initially, it was like a thing that could only be done at big facilities that are well funded. But Illumina is continuously releasing new products that are meant for different people at different scales, you know. So we can have the smallest one. We can do few, you know, targeted approaches, few viruses in it. And then we have the large one, like the, uh, the Novasik, we can whole human genome sequencing. So I would say we're seeing both fronts, you know, whereby we have individual small labs who are busy doing this kind of work but then obviously for more cost effective way is where we go for these uh, centers of excellence because to buy like an overseek it's gonna cost you a lot of money and you may not even be having enough samples to take it to take through the, the platform because here it's a number of it's, it's a number game you know 
the more samples you're able to push through this system, the more cost effective it becomes. As you mentioned earlier, like we don't have enough awareness. People don't really understand the beauty of having a genome sequence. So we don't have as many requests coming through. So th that way, we're seeing that uh, obviously most of the sample, we direct them to these centers of excellence. And we have few, mostly established like mainly in South Africa. And also we're seeing satellites here and then the rest of Africa. You know, so we're getting there, but I would say anybody can do this. It all depends on your needs. And that's where we come in to advise you, which is the best fit for uh, uh, the application you have in mind. Okay, awesome. So now, now I want to ask a selfish question here. I mean, I, I can imagine the power of a unit. No like, if I wanted to sequence my own genome or someone that I love, you know, like a loved one's genome, you know, does that currently happen in South Africa or in Africa? Or does this often get sent off to like uh, institutions abroad, you know, where, you know, they pay for a service. I remember like the 23 and Me tests and then that gets sent over somewhere else. Is that currently the situation or are there centers that are starting to offer these type of tests locally? I like that one. It's like a trick question, but I always say if you love it, if you hate it, if you see it, if you don't understand it, just sequence it. Because once you have that data, you can always make sense out of it uh, uh, later on in the bioinformatics. Because the genetic composition doesn't really change that much, obviously, unless you are looking into what's getting expressed, you know. So I would really encourage you to go for that. So. As I mentioned earlier, like currently, like to do a human, a human genome is relatively large. You know, we're looking at about 3.2 billion uh, base pairs. You know, that's huge. And that cannot be sequenced on our low benchtop instrument like the iSeq, MiniSeq, MySeq, those or even NexSeq 2000. Those are too small. So for such a genome, because we're looking at uh, you want to have like, a decent coverage to make sense of what you are seeing. So those one are definitely meant for large platforms like uh, uh, the Nova 6, 6,000. And you are correct and actually makes me sad because most of the African genomes that have been done were all done overseas. Because prior to that, we did not have uh, facilities that could support such large scale of work. But as we are speaking, just in the mother city in Cape Town, we actually have three Nova 6 here in Africa. So. We're getting there, you know, and just to, you know, if you go lower, because sometimes we say you don't want to just sequence the whole genome unless you, you know, it's just for a, a fun game there, you know. <laughs> if you want to get more sense of what's going on, we normally look at what's getting expressed. And that's why we go for the exome sequencing. So for that, you can do that at relatively many sites in Africa, even here in Kauteng, because we do have like the, the next sequence. 550, next, uh, 2000, next, 1000, which you can do a whole human exome sequencing at a decent coverage. And you get a lot of uh, uh, information that's valuable in deciding which the best, uh, uh, let's say, treatment or actually talking of which I saw something interesting. People go for wine testing. I saw a company that says they can do your human genome sequencing and match it to the wine that your palate would be happier to to taste. So we're getting, it's becoming a lifestyle now. So yes, you can do it in, 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 in here in Africa, in most sites as well. But yeah, we need to really make more people aware of the benefits of having that genome sequence. Whether it's for you, your loved one, whether it's plants, hey, let's go for it, you know? No, <laughs> awesome, excellent. So I'm getting the sense <laughs> that the exome sequencing is more practical in the short term. Obviously, having more Novaseq 6000s that are doing full genome sequencing, getting as many, uh, you know, subsets of population sequence. For the future, it's definitely the, the way it's all going to go. So building that capacity, and I'm sure, I mean, if people are willing to spend money on getting their, their exome sequence for wine pairings, I mean, honestly, they will be doing <laughs> for more important precision health applications and i think they should you know seeing those and it's about building those capacities you know having those capacities locally in africa is how we're we going to drive precision medicine in the future and uh, i'm excited to see the establishment and the rollout of genomics on the continent because it's surely coming uh, i imagine the cost is one of the limitations but you know it's slowly coming down i mean if i had to throw a rough question to you there i mean if we talk about a whole genome sequence like those, those you know all those base pairs what is it the costs you know maybe at the technology level it'll be different with the markups as you offer services and market them but you know more or less do you have an idea of what it would cost to 
fundamentally sequence more or less uh, a human genome and maybe it doesn't have all those coverages because i mean even recently there was only some of that uh, you know un you know you know sequence yeah. information coming yeah. back in so can you yeah. have an idea for that I normally say, like, you know, uh, I'm more of the application guy. I'm the guy you go to if you want to know, like, okay, how much data do I need to sequence a human genome? You know, how can I do this? It's the best instrument for this based on your throughput. But you know what? I'm not uh, in this alone. So we have a, a team of uh, sales specialists who uh, did some numbers for me. And actually, as I mentioned earlier, this is a number game, you know? Like now, the most cost-effective way to sequence a human genome is actually to put 48 human genomes in one next sick run, you know. There you'll get a decent coverage of about 120, you know, uh, 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 X coverage. And we're looking at anything between uh, uh, 500 to $1,000, you know. And as I'm mentioning this, I would also want to reflect back earlier a comment I made that to do something like that when we had the first rough draft of the human genome. It costed in excess of three billion US dollars. Now we're talking below a thousand US dollars. And as the technology is uh, developing, as more people are, are, are coming into this, we can not even eventually see the hard dollar human genome sequencing, you know, on Illumina platform. So we're getting there. That's like a rough range of what we expect, you know, but uh, we do have um, uh, uh, people who are offering those services. And if you are really keen on this, you you know, we can link you with our um, sales specialists and they can give you the costing or refer you to the right sites to do such work. So it's happening. Okay, awesome. That's great. So all you need is 48 friends with, uh, you know, let's say, okay, well, $1,000, let's use that as a rough <laughs> number. It's about 20,000 Rand. Let's rough it out as well. So it's one where obviously there's the markups and investing in the equipment, the return on investment. But I mean, it's not that impractical. It's not like it's half a million Rand, you know, or 200,000 Rand, you know, to get this yeah. done. And yeah. I think this maybe brings me to my next question, because having genomic information is useful for sure. But increasingly, science is constantly making sense of that through bioinformatics. You know, how companies, are there companies that are designated to actually monitoring updates regarding your genomic material? So let's say you have this genomic information. I imagine there's some kind of services that do offer this continuous evaluation of mashing up current science and uh, discoveries around genomics to your genome and kind of giving you some kind of updates and feedback on that. So actually, you know, like, because uh, I want to remain relevant to the challenges we see in an African continent, mm. you know, I can comfortably say coming from Kenya, whereby if today I go and I tell my grandmother that um, there is a disease called cancer or HIV, she'll be like, no, that's witchcraft, you know, we don't have anything like that. So because they are more concerned about like, you know, now I hear COVID, I lost loved one, I have... I hear people have HIV, like, what can we do to make sure that there's a better understanding of these things? So that's why I'm running away a little bit from, you know, the sophisticated and the lifestyle kind of sequence. Some people, if you have money, you can do that. But just to give you a scenario, you know, for example, when COVID outbreak started, just to show you the power of genomics, in China, you know, when the, when the initial uh, report came through from uh, who was there, you know, they the company that made the vaccine actually never heard of the real virus itself. All they depended on was what was sequenced on mainly on Illumina platform and they get the, the genetic information they were able to generate the vaccine, the message RNA vaccine that we're using today. Another point to drive home here is um, we have seen a lot of HIV infection globally. And initially what would happen is you go to a doctor and guess what they do? They just randomly pick different drug, uh, anti retroviruses drugs and they give those to you. Then they tell you, come back after six months and to see where, how you're progressing. They'll determine if you come back, that means you made it. If the, if the virus is still there, that means the, dose, um, the drug you are given wasn't the right one. So to avoid that, this is what we are advocating for. Get the patient isolate that RNA, characterize it, know what mutation it has, and know which drugs would be effective. The same thing applies to TB, which are also a big burden in Africa, you know? So we now seeing a lot of companies 
coming through with the edge to edge solutions you can start from a sample and you give you a report and you tell you like this patient has these these different viruses you know and they are sensitive to these and these drugs you know that's where we're going and as you mentioned earlier on is the same thing we can get in a other gen you know inheritable disease and i may not react the same as you do because our genetic composition is different and this is where we pushing this technology to make sure that we're getting uh, drugs that are tailor-made for the, our genetic differences. So yeah, we do have those solutions and more and more are coming through as people realize how effective this technology can be in solving most of the challenges we're having today as, as humans. So, okay. No, awesome. I love it. I mean, the use of it at uh, the clinical point, the point of care, that's kind of the objective of having genomic information. And it seems like you're quite knowledgeable on like the setup and the applications. Let me ask a question. Now, if obviously, let's just call it a medical center is looking to start to, you know, it's one where it's almost like Moore's Law. Genomics is getting increasingly cheaper and cheaper as the years go on. And we can envision yeah. a future where we will have rapid turnaround genomic services and maybe, you know, not so much whole genome, but maybe omics. So let's say, for instance, someone wants to set up a, a, a center well, you know, let's just say a hospital says we want to set up a genomics testing center. Like what is practically the requirements? You know, what is like, you know, to set that up, what do they need to do uh, at that site? So, you know, like um, in a, like the, the output of the technology is amazing, but that only becomes amazing if you start well and you start from a knowledge point of view, because you know, I always say it's whatever you put into this platform is what you should expect to get out. Yes, we have platform that can have had a different uh, uh, status of nucleic materials because you can start with DNA or RNA. So most of the time often is the isolation. So you need somebody to guide you to tell you like, we need this amount of nucleic acid. We need if it's fragmented, this can go through this workflow. So these were as a company as operations, before anybody, like if I receive a question like that, I get so excited. And all what I do is I get my team around me, you know, the, uh, the, the sales specialists, the engineers, then we listen to the customer carefully to fully understand what, what, what are their, um, what questions do they want to answer? What's their throughput? Then we'll be able to advise you from how to collect the samples, how to store them, because that's also very important, how to isolate the nucleic acid, how to prepare the library, then which platform should you be going ahead and loading onto for the sequencing, and even how to do the data analysis. So this, you need a setup, we need to engage more, we need to create more awareness, because not like every solution fits everybody, this is tailor-made based on your specific needs. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, often in the pharmaceutical world, we have these URSs, these user requirement specifications. It's a requirement, you know, and it sounds like it's exactly the same kind of application where you go from, you know, sample sourcing all the way to final yeah. output, how you're going to interpret that data, how you're going to inform the patient about that data. So definitely, it sounds like you also have a very comprehensive team of engineers that support application specialists, the sales teams as well. And I'm sure there's this constant network where, you know, there's people People refer to these centers of excellence because at the end of the day we just want to build the footprint of uh, genomics in Africa and it seems like that's something you're super passionate about I know it's something that separations is super passionate about as well as Illumina who is the world leading technology in the space so Charles thank you so much for coming on and giving us a bit of a overview on the landscape and I'm sure I'm gonna have you back on very soon to talk more about omics a bit more about other sites throughout Africa that are actively tackling the challenge of uh, building more data and really advancing science and the genomic sciences out there on the continent it's been awesome to have you on I appreciate your time okay thank you so much Jeff you know it was an honor being here and sharing this and looking forward to uh, engaging more because as you're speaking uh, next week I'll be in Zambia you know, I'm going to see what's happening there, you know, where, <clears throat> where are they as far as adoption of this technology is. And I'm happy to share more with you what instrument they have, because I tell you, you know, South Africa sets the standards and the others follow. But we want to make sure that the rest of Africa also are moving a power with South Africa and other uh, leading countries in Africa. So thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, looking more towards more interaction in the near future. Awesome, excellent. Well, I'm going to have you back on to discuss what happened in Zambia, because I'm sure everyone's interested to know what's happening in Zambia on the front of genomics. Thanks again, Charles. Okay, awesome. Cheers. Cheers.